Well, hello and welcome to that favorite part of the day where you sit back, we bring the issues and we discuss it in depth. And every day we bring you quite an intriguing issue and today we are bringing you an even more intriguing issue. What are we talking about? We are looking at a nationwide towing program where everybody is mandated to pay something into a kitty and then that kitty will be split up. Some of them will be given to some private companies who will then, I don't know, maybe drive around or park at vantage points and so that when your car breaks down, they will come and tow it off. Why is that? Because they claim that 21% of road accidents are caused by cars just left on the roadside with no triangles or reflectors. And they're killing us. And therefore, they should be towed away. And what better way to do it than us all contribute to solve this menace? The nation is divided into two. I think two thirds, a great majority think, nah, it's not right. But a good one third, I think, well, it's a good idea because, well, if I have to pay a little bit to contribute to get some charcoal laden long vehicle off the road, then why not? Where do you stand is the most important thing. And that's what's on the table. But today we have a two part show. As you know, the Habitat Fair is on and Habitat, Habitat, Habitat. How are you going to be a first time buyer? How are you going to roof your house? buy equipment, anything to do with wherever it is that you stay. So, you know, part of the show, we will look at Habitat as well. But for now, compulsory road tolls, uh, well, compulsory recovery tolls or not. My name is Dana Ansakwa, the fourth chief of the famous little republic of Akwamu Dumasa and your favorite host. Don't move. When I come back, I have the firebread guest to educate us on transport. Don't go. Well, with me in the studio is uh, Godfred Achiadakwa, bracket and bracket doctor, <laughs> uh, who's a chartered president of the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport Ghana, also the CEO of RSTC, uh, and they do everything transport, train drivers, uh, manage your fleet, and anything to do with roads. Uh, RSTC is there, and if they are there, then Mr. Chiadakwa is there. Godfrey, you're welcome. Thank you, Nana. Now, I know this is very, very up your street, but I mean, what a better way to solve this menace. I mean, I drive up and down the motorway a lot. <laughs> Most of the times when you're driving, you know, 50 feet, all you know is a big, long vehicle trailer there, and you know, if you, you just have to slow down and swerve, or that could be. And, there's been countless number of stories of people who've just driven and lost their lives. So if the solution is that everybody puts something in the kitty, so these cars will be towed off, you should be in favor of it. I guess you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, Dana. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's a two-way affair. <laughs> um, what is it? You're saying... I want to know whether it is a perception or reality we have to look at. Talking about 21% they keep on quoting all over. Source. I want, to, I want to know if we can get that research paper that was conducted to come out at 21 or 22% of accidents that, that were caused by breakdown vehicles on the road that we ran into. I want to know. We want to look at every statement they put up there. They just quote the number of accident from January to March. The number of deaths and the number of injuries and the number of uh, the, the accidents. But the specifically, telling us about 21% of the causes of road crashes as a result of breakdown vehicles on the road, we are, um, we are, we are here to see that paper. So that we can target that paper. So in the first place, the statistics itself, it has some questions to answer. Mm -hmm. And then two, when we come to the substance of the case, to which national project, PPP, government, private sector partnership to solve that problem, in the first place, the 21% that you're quoting has a problem. Secondly, um, let's look at this year, the mm -hmm. number of accidents that have 
uh, uh, happened from January to date. Let's recall our memory and see how many of them were caused by running into a parked vehicles. We should even know that. So I want to say that, yes, I would not rule out the fact that it is one of the sources of crashes, but it's not a major. It is not a major. Um, you, elsewhere, mm -hmm. this thing, when it is done, whether it's a major or not a major, is good thing to do. But the good thing is that it should, should it be compulsory that everybody that drives on a road should be levied? This thing has happened in Ghana here 15 years ago. We had an express, 24 hour express service at the Aquitaman. Somebody started that, that band. That was a German, uh, a Ghanaian German project. And they did it 15 years ago. What they were doing is what I think should be done. How would, were they doing it? People were optionally go into them and said, I have a fleet of vehicles. So I want to pay some premium to you. Then you would make sure that any time any of my vehicles breaks down, I call you and you pick it from that place for me. Then I will not pay any other. So you go and do that. It's just like insurance, mm -hmm. putting that kitty into the pool. Now that was going on. And it went on for some time until the man, the demise of the man, that thing collapsed. But it was a be better project. But, but were they able to manage it? They managed it. It was going on well. It was going on. And you had branches all over the country. They called 24 hours service recovery. It was there. The headquarters was at the man. And it was perfectly managed. It was going on well. I met those days. I met some of the regional managers, spoke to them. It was a perfect project. And people voluntarily go and, uh, and uh, insure, uh, take that insurance to cover mm -hmm. them. It wasn't compulsory. Okay? And now, in this time, they said it should be compulsory. Compulsory, everybody's going to pay. It's a motorcycle, it's 10 Ghana City. And then if it is a, an articulator truck, 100, uh, 100 Ghana City. Let us know the number of vehicles that we have in Ghana. As far back as 2012, the total number of vehicles we have in Ghana was 1.532 billion. Now, it keeps on rising. So this time we're talking about 2.3, 2.5 uh, million vehicles in, in Ghana. And with these vehicles, levying those amount and then that not even the amount per se that is our problem but the fact that you are going to pay an amount for somebody's negligent act somebody who is having that vehicle driving that vehicle and if the vehicle has broken down the onus lies on that person to make sure that that car is towed from that place or at a proper triangle is is, is put in place so that people can uh, see it so that they would not run into it. So if that person is failing this duty to do his religious duty, then said, hey, Ghana, everybody pay for it. Then if he does it, then I go and pull it for you. I mean, I, I don't catch I mean, it. I, 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 get, I get what you're saying, but if it's, if it's a it's not like a national duty where you know we are all well, we are all involved. Let's all pay for it, and well, all fair do. If your car breaks down, fine. If it doesn't break down, and you don't know when your car will break down, anyways, so it's not as if I'm guaranteed that my car is never going to break down. And then you know they can, you know, the state can respond to the call because there, there'll be that, you know, money in the pot. No, I, I, I don't get the idea. You know, this thing is. A PPP project mm. and I'm seeing it purely as it's a political one of those political gimmicks that somebody want to rule so that they can get some booties I see that straight away because why don't you make it voluntary if I have my vehicle how many I have driven for so many years I've never had a, a single day that my vehicle has broken in, in on the road but yes I understand the principle of insurance I'm a chartered insurer from UK mm. I know what the principle of insurance and how it works that we all contribute money to the pool, mm -hmm. so that if one person becomes a victim of the circumstances, then we go and do it. But it's not like it's, like, it's not like that. It is not like that. It is not that insurance principle that we're going to work here. And even if insurance principle, that one, we have the, uh, the, the Road Traffic Act, I mean, the Insurance uh, Act that is protecting people who are only having this vehicle for their injuries and proper, uh, property damages and deaths. But this one, we're talking about towing of the vehicle, I think, purely. It should be left in the purview of a private is, is company. It, won't it be easier to manage if if we collect money and tow rather than, you know, send our limited police force all around making sure that 
cars don't break down and you move it and you move that. Maybe, maybe this would be an easier option to manage the situation. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. If it is a, it's a good option, convince the people so that they won't try to go into it. Because the reason why they want to make it compulsory, we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't support support it. And look at the people who came into the, the play of this one. National Risk Safety Commission, the DVLA, and then the MTTD. Leaving out the chunk of the public. Ask them whether they've had even engaged any uh, conversation with GPRTU, Pro Tour, a Progressive. And they've left them in limbo. So I know something is happening. They are not going to tolerate it. Mm. And I've spoken to all the transport unions. I've spoken to all of them. They are not going to tolerate this one because it is unfair. It's another means of taxing the people. Mm. But it's a means that this, they are using the political mics to perpetuate that economic gains uh, against the vulnerable groups. And, you know, right now, what I, I, I'm pleading with the minister with, who has all this responsibility under his purview, that right now when Nana came, he's trying to solve things. Things are not solved as it's expected. If they're going to try to in, uh, introduce levies, levies, why they say they're going to reduce taxes and they're going to introduce levies, it's going to create some chaos. Hmm. So I don't, uh, they shouldn't go the way they are going. You, you, you'd rather we launch like an education on the need to register with a recovery That's insurance it. sort That's of it. They should. They should, they should appeal to the car owner's conscience. Especially, what, what, let me ask you this one. What type of vehicles that break down and are left on the road that people, vehicles mostly run into? They are mostly the big articulators. And how many of them, how often does it happen? Let's be sincere to them. How often does it happen? Who has done any research telling us that last year this number of accidents occurred and this percentage were as a result of running into? We don't have those things. So people are using their own perception to come up to create the statistics to say that we know that the toy to the, 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 the road traffic act backs it. Mm -hmm. It backs it. Yeah. But let me ask you, if you're talking about 21%, I assume you agree with the 21%, what about the 65% of the cost which is caused by overspeeding? Why should you leave that one? That has the chunk of the cost. That then that to dwell on that's that little aspect that we don't have even a proof case, a proven case mm. that it is it is a positive uh, 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 cause of the accident. So, you think we, we they are leaving the bigger fish, fish. out and, and catching the smaller and one, catching the smaller one, and then we expand the, the, the network just because of the the, 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 the monetary gains. And we think people are going to resist it vehemently. Let, let me let me go to the phone and speak to DSP Alexander Obey, director for education. Research and Training, MTTU. Uh, DSP are being welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, and good evening. Good evening, and uh, maybe you can help us with some education here. I have with me Dr. Godfrey Achinadakwa, who's a transport expert, if I may say, and I know you are also a transport expert. But there's this you know, rule coming, or this law, where by 1st July we should all pay something uh, while we're going to renew our insurances towards uh, road recovery. And, and uh, the nation is now sort of split. So we probably need further education as to uh, why it should be compulsory or should we be educated so that willingly we go and, uh, you know, join, you know, a recovery, a, a recovery company. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I think, first of all, uh, we, we come in because uh, it's a legal thing. Uh, Parliament has passed it, and it's part of our rule law. And we, uh, as law enforcers, uh, have uh, uh, a stake in it and interest because uh, it was made go is to uh, get rid of certain risks that uh, also accelerate crash and therefore uh, for us we don't have much except that uh, we wait for the uh, the roll-up plan to be consummated so that uh, any time we are called to do this to remove the civil abandoned or accident vehicles we will get the needed support from 
a third party, otherwise or a tourist service provider or providers to come in and support us. And so, so far as I'm concerned, uh, unless there is a second look at the uh, regulation 102 to 105 of the LI-2180, we stand by the state. And whatever processes that the state has been involved with this agency, we fully support it and hope that other Ghanaians that are also shown uh, sustained interest and some of them studying interest in road safety matters will continue to also enjoy and make their contribution because where we are, we are the sensitization, uh, sensitizational state and we are about to roll it out because this has been in the law since 2012 and processes have gone on to the extent that uh, the service provider has been procured by the state. So uh, I thought that uh, with the coming into force of the ally, uh, road uh, users, including vehicle owners, uh, should be particular and interested in the ally and know the nitty gritty should not be left to anybody. Yes, let, the, let me the come in here. In time, uh, please, not at the point in time when uh, 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 a program like this is, uh, its implementation is being consummated, that all of a sudden you see people coming in from all angles. But it's well and good because uh, uh, what you see is also an emerging thing, and we are happy that others are showing interest. and and expressing their views, but it should also cut across. Before, 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 we, yes, before we cut across, yes, before we cut across, the, yes, yes, yes. We cut across the, the twenty-one percent road deaths caused by stationary vehicles. What's the source, or who, who did that research? Pardon me. The, the twenty-one percent road death, which is caused by stationary vehicles on the roads. Who, who, who did the research? What's the source? I believe uh, 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 in Ghana. We have uh, uh, an agency that supports the state and do the all these uh, uh, things for us. And uh, you know, you know, DRI, DRI of the uh, science ministry that uh, supports National Road Safety Committee and police can take uh, our daily and annual statistics to further analysis and. Uh, these trends are clear that uh, when you look at the crashes that are happening, of any hundred deaths that you can account, you are likely to account that 2125 of the deaths who have been attributed to uh, a vehicle crashing into uh, a vehicle that on, on uh, left on the road among us. So we have a, a sense of analyzing crashes. And, and, the, and, the, and the, the, agency, the agency that did the research is called what? But I'm saying that uh, how we procure our national crash statistics is known to all practitioners. And I believe I'm not the source, and I know that uh, the road traffic crash reports that we have annually when you do the analysis out you get this thing. I see. So basically you just your your accident log in police stations and then you, you tabulate it. And I'm saying that after we have done our daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly and annual report of crashes, we not be RRI of Ministry of Science is uh, always contacted by National Road Safety Committee to do further crash analysis of all our reports across all police systems and come out with annual crash reports. And I'm saying this one is known. Okay, so, my, my last question. That is not new. 
My, my last question before you go uh, is that 65% of road deaths are caused by speeding. Uh, but the urgency and the speed with which we are collecting and taxing and finding people for the 25, it's like you're leaving the bigger fish and you are going for the smaller but, fish. But we, are, we are saying when you do tax analysis and you are not careful, so when you go and say 65% of the deaths are attributable or the crashes, the speed, uh, the speed in the city will not go and cause accidents. There might also be that there was a uh, uh, something that was left on the road, which may be a vehicle, that because of speeding in the air, the person also could not avoid it. So we, uh, we, are, we need to be very careful about it, that these uh, interplay, all these causal factors interplay and, uh, and, and, and create this uh, uh, conflict on, on our uh, road speed. So when we are doing analysis of cash, we should also know that some of the causal factors interplay. And sometimes it's very difficult sometimes to isolate one and talk about it without talking about the other. And and I thought that we 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 know that the more you solve breaking down vehicle problem, the stable vehicle problem on our road, it will have also positive impact on speeding uh, speeding outcome because it's likely that you may see, but since vehicles may not be broken down, obviously the crash may not have occurred. Okay, again we <coughs> also also we also know that there instances that practitioners are also saying that oh, let's dualize our, uh, our arterial roads uh, in, or the intercity one uh, so that uh, vehicle, the room use in the traffic for uh, just a thin line to divide oncoming vehicles so that uh, some of these things will, will stop and all that. So, yes, yes, we, another, uh, you know. One, one thing about these heavy trucks, and mainly the cars that are broken down are heavy trucks, are almost all illegally overloaded. And uh, today, you know, on my WhatsApp, I was sending pictures of, of, you know, absolute menace on the road. And they've driven past, you know, your men standing by. You know, most all these, all these cars must have passed one policeman or two. Yeah. So that, I, nothing, I, nothing ever happens, you know. So I, then, think, I think, first of all, to let's... Uh, it's good that these things are coming out. But sometimes people oh, it's overloaded. It is overloaded. We we need to all sometimes also we have to be very, very careful when we say it's overloaded. There are no instances where we have to be overloaded. But overloading has to do with as do with. And when you look into our airline and look at the regulation it is this I'm talking about. Since this airline, uh, this issue of enforcement of weight, load weight has also been taken over by the Ministry of Food and Harris. And you have a plethora of other way bridges and at various departure points and at critical locations on our arterial road where most of these vehicles are applying. And they, they, so far they are doing a good job. And I know in certain instances, uh, some of the operators didn't want to go on the initiative because of the strictness of the uh, uh, regime of uh, ensuring that Loading is standardized, and I thought that mm, unless maybe you are saying that oh, this is the insecure and all that, because that's why you see police. We are always in this as way because we don't have the machine to set except the as way that the state has secured and installed on our corridors and we are checking. And currently, we have added. So, if, if if a car is tilted at you know. And you know, you know, a wrong angle. I mean, sometimes, obviously, maybe I don't know how much load in it, but physically, you can tell that the load is not secure. And DSP, yes, yes. if I were to open the phone lights now, we see it every day. No, what I'm saying is that if the load is insecure, it's not overloading. You know, overloading is different. I mean, if the load is insecure, that one becomes an enforcement issue. And I think that this one becomes an information of which we have. To also incorporate in our Diana anyway, thank you. Uh, thank enforcement efforts. Yes, we thank you uh, very much. That's all time will allow me today, but I'm sure sometime next week we'll come in and continue. Uh, oh, I think next week I would like to be part of the, the, the program. I would love you to be here I, so we I, have I would, a better... I would like to be part. But thank like I said, this is some of these issues. Uh, we need to take it one by one. We'll bring them together and... You are discussing, it becomes a big problem. Well, I, 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 I will need you here next week because I don't know how we can do it one by one because it all cumulates yes. you no, know, you, into you, it. You see, Professor, I could have said that the devil lies in the details. It's very important we analyze each causal factor one after the other and how they interlink 
and then we, we, we all of us will appreciate it. Thank Another, you. Another, for example, maybe we said, oh, uh, overloading, say, ah, let's wait, maybe it may be secure. Because overloading, I know most of these vehicles, the loads are, have been standardized, and we have a, a system of routine on all corridors. And it's, it, there are stringent uh, punitive actions if people overload the, and all that. DSP, we'll make, we'll, make a date, we'll make a date next week, but thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Let me come to studio, Dr. Uh, Achadok Adok. Uh, DSP say, look, they're doing what they can do and that they collect the accident records in the police station weekly, monthly, quarterly, and 20 to 25 percent uh, due to a car that's parked up somewhere. I think it's a common knowledge is throwing around mm -hmm. that we know those things are being done. Mm -hmm. But specifically, the, 20, the 21 percent they are mentioning, it was trying to say that when they do those uh, uh, collision, mm -hmm. the uh, BRI, yes, we know them. They, they are the agents who do the statistics analysis. I want somebody to tell me that this year they said uh, from the analysis, this was what came up with. That's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And then again, that towing thing is an aspect of the Road Traffic Act. And the total Road Traffic uh, Act and regulations should be enforced. Okay? But... It is, I'm just is, it, is, it, is it the same act that says if you are riding a bike, you should wear a helmet? Yes. Yes. So <laughs> there are so many things in the act. So why <clears throat> are we now thinking that we are giving that percentage to the, the, the trouble of car parking on the road cause of obstruction and then giving financial value to it? You, to you, you, you think sanctions can be solved the problem? Where if your car is fined, it's towed to a, a pound and you pay? And that is what is done. During the, uh, the 24 hour recovery service, which was started about 15 years ago. That's what they were doing. If you go and then uh, subscribe to their service, irrespective of the number of vehicles that you have, you pay its commensurate premium. Mm -hmm. Then when your car breaks down, they just go and pick it. So, but I'm talking but about a driver who hasn't got any insurance. Yes. You're taking cocoa somewhere. That's it. Your car is broken down. Yes. The recovery service would then go, doing that it is uh, parked at the wrong place. They will go and tow it. At the instruction of the police. At the instruction of the police. And you come and pay. You pay, but that one, it will not be a small payment. You pay the actual Child cost of the tow. It will not be like paying a premium uh, from the insurance. audience. So that's why it should work. That's why it works. Because even, look, let's look at US and everywhere. It is not that uh, given to one company that is that is to that work with a government that is, uh, they, they take the 85, uh, 50 percent. No, they compete issue. and they give you it's incentives. It's a private company that does it all right. Okay, but if you don't want to go and pay exorbitant uh, a towage fee, then you go and subscribe to them. Then they do it when you have, you have a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, but making it, or, uh, uh, everybody going into it is a problem. It should be done such a way that that co towage company should market itself so that vehicle owners will go and subscribe to that service. Then we pay, and then if you don't do it and your car breaks down, then you pay the penalties. And then it's the police, MTTD, that will instruct the, uh, the towage service that, hey, this car has uh, broken down there, and where it is, is dangerous. So go ahead and tow it. So when the car owner comes, then you deal with the person. That means that the person who has a problem has to face the, make the payment, but not that somebody who is having vehicles and would never have such problem, you should go and pay, as we are doing in insurance. And motorcycles. What, what's the logic behind motorcycles? Uh, motorcycles also break down, and then we pay 10 a city. Well, if I have, I will call. So, if, so if I, I, I mean, <laughs> we, we are not against the, 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 the philosophy of towing the vehicle, but the implementation should be done not on compulsory basis, but on optional basis. So mm. the person has imported this towing vehicle, very, that's very good. But he can tow those vehicles upon the victim. The person who has that problem should pay for it. But not that everybody should pay for somebody's problem negligence. You are not supposed to let your car break down the road if you maintain your vehicles very well. So if you allow your vehicle to uh, 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 break down, you bear the consequences. So, you know, the average motorbike in this country is probably what? One, two, five, two, yeah. 200 cc. Yeah. The average motorbike. Yeah. So they yeah. are small bikes. Yeah. Uh, so as you mean, you are, you know, on the Caswell Road somewhere, mm -hmm. and then you run out of petrol, mm -hmm. then what? You, you call the tow truck yeah. to say what? Yeah. Come and tell me to... Come and tell me to... Come and tell me to... Come and tell How would that... I mean, how would that work? Please, they should make it a, 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 a little friendly, a little accommodating, things that people would like to subscribe to, but should not wear the cap, wear us with the cap by force. That's mm. our problem. And people are planning to resist it, although it is in the law. You know, it happens again last, sometime last uh, two years, 
when they wanted to introduce the, uh, the cameras or the mm -hmm. traffic lights. Mm -hmm. People saw that, how many accidents occur at the traffic lights? That you want to uh, come on the spot fine and all those things. So the arguments came and then they saw the wisdom in it and they withdrew it. So this one, they should not let it come and then people attack the, the implementation that it fails. But rather they should do it so that uh, people will even love to join it than making it composer on people. That's it okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. All too soon, that's what time will allow us on the... Uh compulsory recovery levy let's see how it pans out but i'm for sanctioning you know if your truck is there it's towed to a pound it's two thousand Ghana cities you pay you go and take your truck and so the next time you have the option of two thousand or two hundred cities for your peace of mind and i'm sure we'll all buy into it and again open up let them compete somebody will say look if i tow your truck i'll put you in a bed and breakfast if i tow your truck i'll give you an i-10 to drive until you get your car. Then we all, you know, pick and choose who will give us the better service. And uh, I'm sure we'll be running after each other, you know, to you know, get a recovery to give us a peace of mind. But stay tuned, we're coming straight back. Are you a first time buyer? Do you have a house in deficit problem? Ooh, stay tuned, we're coming back. Well, 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 the narrative has changed, but it's equally exciting and highly important. The southern man's home is his castle. Have you got a castle? Are you a first-time buyer? And indeed, how can you be a first-time buyer? I was listening to the news today, and I hear all the banks are dropping mortgages. You know why? I don't know why. But there were some banks that were charging 40% on your mortgage. But still... You can't sleep on the street. You need to find somewhere to stay. You can start by renting. But one day, one time, you'd have to get your own house. How do you do that? Energy is another thing that's breaking the bank. The bank of the nation, the bank of corporates, the bank of individuals. And the sun is beating and shining us. And we'll say all we use with the sun is Kokonte. And that we can do more with the sun other than Kokonte. Well... I have people in here to discuss. Let me go straight to Godwin AJ Jeffy, who's CEO of SETI Realities uh, Limited. And SETI, you know, I've had some business with SETI before. We have some relationship. Uh, Godwin, you're welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Now. Good, good. And I have Kofi from Paul Wilkins, Engineering Limited, Solar Energy. Who was it? At, you know, all this time that we do so and everything. Why is Kofi now coming on the show? But he will explain to us. Have you got solar in your house and how much are you paying? I know how much I'm paying a month. Ridiculous. But let me start, let me start with Godwin. Godwin, uh, as part of the Habitat Fair, and I'm sure you all know the Habitat Fair now, uh, and this year it's the MNC Property Multimedia Habitat Fair. Everything to do with your home and how you live. Uh, Kofi, I know you know, SETI is doing good in the market, but... How, how are you, you know, carrying on in these times? First time buyers, have they got any opportunity of approaching SETI? Or it's for the veterans? Yeah, you see, first and foremost, let me say this, that there is somewhat 1.7 million housing deficit in Ghana. That's a lot. It's a lot. It's not just a revelation on the state of uh, housing in Ghana, but it's also a revelation on uh, deficit in peace of mind. Because without... Uh, an adequate roof over your head. You have no peace of mind. Mm -hmm. It is also a deficit on comfort because it's obvious, it speaks for itself. Without adequate roof over your head, mm -hmm. you have no comfort whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And this is why we, SETI uh, Realty, have come out with our flagship um, uh, development called Namidia City, which is real, real, not just quality, but affordable. And first-time buyers can approach us through the internet. We are all over the internet. First-time buyers can also approach us uh, uh, through our... I'll uh, take a number from you before you go, if you have a number. Yes, yes, yeah, we do so have I'll a number. Take a number through from our you. mailing, our continuous mailing, mailing system. I mean, we, it is really, really affordable because there's no point in building an apartment when it's not affordable. Mm. So we are here to really help first-time buyers, and that is why we have linked up with a number of quality uh, and resourceful banks who are, who are ready and willing to offer first-time buyers 
uh, 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 80% mortgage. How about those who are not first time buyers but are looking, you know, to buy to let, as they say, you know, uh, do you have the space in the market for buy to let too? Oh, yes, we do. Well, I mean, we even have better than that at SETI Realty. We have what's called a flexible payment plan. What happens is that you come down to our office, you sit down and speak to someone like me, mm -hmm. and I look at your circumstances, and I try and put together a, a, a payment plan which suits your, your income. Mm -hmm. For instance, in many of the developed countries, such as the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. where I grew up, you're not supposed to pay more than 30% of your income towards uh, an apartment or house. And with that concept, we at SETI Realty are trying to help first-time buyers. Okay, yeah. okay. Let, 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 me, let me go to uh, Kofi Frimpong, and Kofi is with uh, Wilkins Energy Engineering Limited, and I'm interested because it's solar energy. I mean, solar energy, solar energy. I'm sure if Engineer Wood is watching uh, the screen by now, he'll probably be jumping, so hallelujah. Uh, it's, it's, it's been a long time coming. Uh, have, we un have we understood solar energy now, the market? Oh, certainly. I mean, there's been an improvement over the, the past few years, um, especially when Doomso um, came up. Yeah. There were a lot of inquiries that um, the customers in general were making. And there were a lot of education that went on, even though it, it wasn't mainstream, it was still some, um, a lot of education as compared to maybe 10, 5 years ago. So there's, there's been a lot of um, um, awareness. Okay, could, we, could we I raise your voice there? Listeners are saying they can okay. hear you. Okay, yeah. so, so um, yeah, <laughs> like you. I was saying, um, there's, there's been a lot of um, awareness creation um, ever since the Doomsaw started, the Doomsaw era. Um, which is now even fading away. But then also since 2015, when the tariff, the electricity tariffs were increased, yeah. uh, there was a lot of outcry by the general public about um, utility rates. So now solar is a better option because if you look at the, the energy curve, you can see um, due to the prices of the components now, solar has an energy price which is less than what your utility offers you. Are you sure? Because that's what we all hear, that solar is expensive, solar is expensive, solar is not cheap. Yes, but on the, on the, on the world ma market, you can tell that the prices are dropping, of have, are dropping drastically. So on, on, a, on an average, let's say, three-bedroom house, and any time you say solar, the first people say, oh, can I run my air conditioning with it? And they say, oh, no, 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 you cannot, you cannot run your air conditioning. So you're just going to do the bulbs, I don't know, and a the, fridge or... Well, I mean, it's, it's an issue of um, your budget. Okay. So um, solar, first of all, let me just clear that. Solar can power anything. It can power everything. I mean, solar powers um, companies. It drives machines to work. So um, what Wilkins we've done, because we've had several inquiries, and you just ask a three-bedroom house. It's a case of Uniska is Udi Mwaome. It's Uniska is Udi Mwaome. So you can use solar for basically? Everything. Ah. Everything. Just yeah, buy your, your, <laughs> your condition. But at Wilkins, what we've done is we've designed some packages, what we'll be exhibiting at your fair um, in a couple of months. Um, so these packages range between um, 10,000 to about th 30,000. Um, the, the, the last option, 30,000, you can use um, your air conditioning on there. So I mean... But is that the 30,000 one, do, do you have a payment plan on it? Or so so now, what I mean, we had to do that. We were forced by the market to do that, to have a certain payment plan. It's not as flexible as we wish it could be, mm -hmm. but we are still um, discussing with various banks to get that sort of flexibility. And that will run the house? That will, that will run your house. That will run your house. Um, personally, I have one of the, mm -hmm. the, the 30,000 at home. I, I can say I'm off the, the network about five times a week. Five really? days in a week, yes. And I have an air condition that runs a lot of hours. So if, if, you, if you don't use the air con, then you have enough battery parts? Oh, if you don't use the aircon, you, you would have enough parts for every day. Because <laughs> you know air conditions yes. consume a lot of energy. Trying to save a lot of money because yes, the energy yes. is just... Yes, energy it's is just, just too high. Just too high. Yes. Uh, uh, Godwin, so which, which, which areas are you now you know, developing? Where, 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 which are your areas now? Um, as I alluded you to earlier, our flagship um, apartments, Nyamidia, Nyamidia uh, is located in a place called Pung, which is, which is located very close to the Temamotu Way, 
roundabout uh, bef just before Community 25, okay. in the heart okay. of infrastructural development. There's a mall up there yeah. now, isn't it? Yes, the mall is uh, being there's developed. There's yeah, a mall yeah. being developed up there yes. now. Yes. I mean, Accra is full up now. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's why we moved to Tema. Because <laughs> Tema, you have a peace of mind you know, away you, from the traffic. And, and, and your <laughs> your thirty percent package thing. Yes. Uh, you know, how, do I need to go through some bank, bring some collateral? You know, bring my grandma um, or something. <laughs> you see, each individual banks that we will refer you to or have their own individual requirements, it, may, it will vary. Okay. So we cannot, it's not a case of one jacket fits all. Oh, okay. yeah, but however, having said this, the banks are very, very accommodating. And as a result, a number of people have purchased some of our apartments without any difficulties whatsoever. I mean, I don't wish to advertise for these banks, but can I mention their names? Of course, of course, of course. You're looking at HFC, okay. you're looking at Stambic, and also, you're looking at um, Ghana Home Loans. So they are who, good, yes, yeah, they are good guys. Yes, in, they're in all the good mortgage, guys. Yeah, the mortgage industry. very, very friendly. And, and, and <laughs> are there are there properties available, or these are ones that you have to pay and wait eight months for completion? Oh no, not at all. Our apartments are ready, ready built and ready to be occupied. Yeah. Could we, uh, get, get, uh, uh, and we get have over two hundred. <laughs> oh, good. That's, that's, that's even good news. So and get get your number for me and uh, Kofi. I mean, so how, how, how soon, I mean, are they ready or these ones are, you yeah. have to come and see the house and then they go and no, order, so break? So these, these, these um, packages I was talking about, they are pre-designed. Okay. So once um, we show you the packages, what they can do, you just tell me, look, I want this option. But 30,000, would, would, would an average house have enough roof for these panels? No, yes, yes, yes. There's not, there's not actually a lot of panels. Um, yes, there's about mm -hmm. 12 panels. Really? Uh, yes. Well, then intakes have really changed. No, a lot of things have changed. Now panel <laughs> sizes are bigger, but then take smaller space. I see, I see, I see. And so 30,000, a garage full of batteries? No, just um, eight batteries. Um, a stack up to this height. Well, then things, then maybe you guys are not doing well with the education. You're not telling so us what's happening. So we'll be, coming, we'll, be we'll be coming more. We need to be, uh, yeah, we need to be, <laughs> <laughs> we need to be coming more. Sure. But I mean, assuming I don't, I just want to maybe just take my lights off the grid or just take the fridge off the grid yes so that i split so they are, they are i mean initially back back in the day what we used to do is we come to your home come and do the analysis that is still something we do um even though it takes time and all of that but that's possible you can just take your lighting load off or take your lighting and refrigerator off leave um, maybe high powered appliances on the grid so that you i mean it will still save cost at the end because normally when doom so comes, all you just need is light and ventilation. Light and so exactly. if you have a fan and a light, you, you, you're <laughs> normally okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so you can do that, I mean. Sure, certainly. Um, so the package that I mentioned, uh, the 10,000 package, um, so that includes just a few lights, about um, up to 12 lights. If you have LED lights, you can do more. Okay. Um, a, a refrigerator, the, um, the, the 330 watts peak, I don't, I don't know what brand, but then, and uh, a couple of you know your radios, as for your laptops on computers, those things are not even you know high powered. So, Godwin, let me take a number for safety, just in case somebody wants to. Yes, yeah, sure. You can contact us at the following num with the following numbers: mm -hmm. zero two six four three seven four two zero one, or on zero two six four three. Seven four zero one, and then we also have an email address which is g dot jamfi that is g y a m f i at seti realty dot com. And uh, could we okay, so um, our, our numbers are zero five seven seven mm -hmm. eight eight seven eight four three four okay. or mm -hmm. zero five seven seven. Eight eight seven eight three nine. So you can contact us to discuss more on the package. Okay. So if you if you want solar, if you want solar energy, it's uh, zero five seven seven eight eight seven eight three eight. That's solar energy. Zero five seven seven eight eight seven eight three eight. If you want a roof over your head, it's zero two six four three seven 
4201. That's yeah. SETI Realty. 026-437-4201. My name is Nana Sakwa. This has been beautiful. Tomorrow we're back to do this all over again. And I want to say thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, thank you very much. Do you at home? Thank you very much. <laughs>